Like many things related to forests and forest management, the way that we're managing ash trees here at the Heinsberg Town Forest is really complex and nuanced. We have a non-native invasive pest, an insect known as the emerald ash borer. You'll often see it abbreviated as EAB. And this pest is gonna move through our forest and it's gonna kill almost all of our ash trees. It presents us with a really interesting problem. So on one hand, we know that these trees are gonna die. And in the case of the Heinsberg Town Forest, if we harvest some of those trees, we can capture some of that value and we can use that money to promote other really important things. So we can use it to treat invasive species. We can use it to protect this piece of forest land forever. We can use it for all these really important things related to uh, the health of the forest and also the public use of the forest to invest in uh, trail work and stuff like that. At the same time, what we don't wanna do is to cut all the ash trees uh, and lose this species from our forests entirely. We know that there is a tiny little bit of resistance. If we go out and we cut all the ash trees, we will lose the opportunity for potentially some EAB resistant ash trees that might be out there and, and the opportunity to have ash as a species on our landscape in the future. At the same time, we have to be realistic about what is going to happen and know that almost all of these ash trees are gonna die. Where you see ash trees in the Heinsberg Town Forest that are marked to be cut with that diagonal blue slash, they're being cut for a couple different reasons. One of those reasons is to capture that value. So it's a tree that is mature that we expect to die. And so we're gonna turn that value uh, into money that we can then use to promote other conservation objectives here at the Town Forest. The second reason is to promote other trees. So we're in the middle of a, a very stressful time for trees. Our climate is changing really fast and in all these unpredictable ways. And so any help that we can give to our trees is a real asset. So if you have a healthy sugar maple and an ash that's growing right next to it, if you can cut that ash and proactively uh, relieve that sugar maple from the stresses associated with competing with that ash for growing space, then you can theoretically give that sugar maple a little bit more juice to sort of deal with all the other stressors that it's dealing with. And the third reason that we're gonna cut ash will be to create pockets of regeneration. So we know that in general, we wanna make our forests more diverse. So diverse in terms of the different species of trees and also in terms of the structure, the different sizes and ages of trees. And so we're creating gaps of all shapes and sizes in the forest canopy. And we know that we need gaps that are pretty large to create opportunities for species like white ash, which are pretty intolerant of shade. So we think that a white ash tree needs like a quarter acre opening in order to grow to maturity. So believe it or not, we actually wanna create and promote ash regeneration in an effort to keep ash on the landscape. Uh, we wanna create a lot of genetic variability. We wanna create a lot of little ash that will all have a chance to grow up and become large ash hopefully someday. This is also the trees that were we to figure out how to deal with EAB in the future, uh, these were the trees that will become the future of this species.